Seventh grade, lesson 112. This is on applications of Pythagorean theorem. Now, I want to express something to you. Let's say I, I, we, we looked at a 40-foot building, okay? Now, if the corner, let's pretend this is the corner of the 40-foot building, okay? If the corner of the 40-foot building was, okay, so this is a perfect 90 degrees. If I went just one degrees off, Either 91 or even 89 degrees. One degree's off. Guess what happens to the whole building? What? You get the Leaning Tower of Pisa. <laughs> Seriously. If my corner, when I build this, is not a perfect 90 degrees, it messes the entire building up. So, they came up with the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem. Okay? And that is totally spelled wrong. Pythagorean theorem. Okay? <laughs> theorem. Okay. Now. No, you can't oh, see it still on still spelled it wrong. Okay, whatever. Anyway, the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? Let me look at it. Is it messed up? Ah. Okay, no worries. So anyway, the Pythagorean theorem states this. So for example, let's just look at this corner. The way that a person that builds houses or builds a 40-foot building... The way that he tells if he's got a perfect 90 degree angle is using the Pythagorean Theorem. Now, with the Pythagorean Theorem, there's something called the 3, 4, 5 triplet. And this is the method they use to check. So, guess what? They take a yardstick or a measuring tape and they measure 3 feet. So this bottom one, they measure three feet from this corner, Eli, from this corner they measure three feet and they make a mark. Okay, I made a mark after three feet. Then on this one, they measure and they do four feet. Okay, so I've marked the three foot and I've marked the four foot from this corner. Okay. Then guess what happens? Then they take a measurement. Sorry about that. We fixed the lighting so it would be better. Okay, so now, once you get your three foot mark from corner to this is three foot, then you do your th four foot. So I did my three and my four, and guess what this five is for? What? I measure from this line to this line. And if it measures five foot, guess what? What? I've got a perfect 90 degree angle. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. How they do that? Okay? And if you were doing something small, you could do three inches, four inches, and then check to see if this is five inches. Or even three centimeters, four centimeters, and this would be five centimeters. So if it matches the three, four, five triplet, you know you've got a perfect square or a perfect corner, which means your um, building is not going to be the Leaning Tower of Fisa. Okay? So, that's how that works, just so you know, okay? Now, there are several different triplets, okay? They don't just use the three, four, five. Um, I'm going to come up with another one. So, I'm going to double everything. So, watch this. Three times two is six. Four times two is eight. Five times two is ten. I can also use six, eight, ten. See that? Yeah. Or even, I can do three times that. Three times three is nine. Four times three is twelve. 5 times 3 is 15. I could use the 9, 12, 15. So, these are just called the triplets. There actually is one more, okay? So, those are called the Pythagorean triplet, okay? That's what that is. Now, they're going to give us two examples on this, actually three. So, stay with me. We're going to do them using the Pythagorean triplets, okay? So, here we go. The numbers 5, 12, and 13 are another Pythagorean triplet because... 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared, okay? So then they ask, what are the next three multiples of this Pythagorean triplet, okay? And so guess what I'm going to do? You see this 5, 12, and 13? How am I going to double that? Uh, 10, 24, and so, 26? Yes, very good. So... 
that would be another Pythagorean triplet. So there's many different ways. This is one by doing 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Okay? All that to say, there are many different ways you can do triplets. Okay, so listen to this problem. All right, I've got a house. All right, and my roof looks like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now they are wanting, here's what they say, a roof is being built over a 24-foot wide room. So, is it fair to say that this is 24 feet? A roof is yeah. being built over a 24-foot wide room. All right. The slope, which means the height or the fall, um, of the roof is 4 by 12. Okay? So it's the rise or the slope is 4. So from the, the top of the, right there, to the top of the roof is 4. Uh-huh. Okay, are we getting close to figuring out something? Okay, so stay with me. Then here's what it says. Calculate the length of the rafters. This is the rafter, or the counter got part that hangs off, needed for the roof. And include two feet for the rafter tail. Good job. Okay, so guess what we're going to do to try to figure this out? I know my height. Mm -hmm. Do I know this length? Uh, 12. 12. Very good, because this is 12 and this is 12 because that's 24. Okay, so do you remember the Pythagorean trip, um, theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Remember learning that? Yeah. Okay, so on this, remember c is always the one across from the 90 degree angle. Okay. So do I know my c? No. no. But I know my A and my B. So I'm going to go 4 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. Okay? What is 4 squared? 16. Okay? What is 12 squared? 144. Okay? What is 144 plus 16? Uh, 160. So 160 equals C squared. Now, I don't want to answer for C squared. I want to answer for C. So how do I get rid of that square? Uh, do you remember? You divide. I Close. No, I, don't know, I, don't know. I want to move this across the equal sign. You know what so the opposite square of square 160? The opposite of square, um, square, I'm sorry, of the square, t this two square is the opposite is to do the square root, right? Uh, okay. So when I move it across the equal, that becomes this, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of my previous lessons. So C equals the square root of 160. Okay? Now, do we know what the square root of 160 is? Mm -hmm. No. Okay? So I could just put square root of 160 and be done. But they want to know how long this whole thing is. And this is two feet, and we don't know what this. So what the, the um, book ended up doing is what's the closest we can get? So, the closest we can get is 12.65 times 12.65, and that is the closest we can get to 160. Try it. 12. 160.0225. Yeah, so that's very close. Okay, so this is 12.65. Okay? All right? Now, the question is, how long is the rafter? On the roof, it's two feet, right? Because the they whole said thing, the whole thing. Oh, okay. So, the whole so you would say twelve point sixty five plus two is fourteen. Fourteen point sixty five feet. Okay. Now the other thing they do with this sixty five feet, you see this? They don't want decimals because when you're taking a measuring stick or a measuring tape, you don't have point six five on it. So guess what they do? They take 0. 0.65 feet and, round it to the and they're going to change it to inches. So, do you remember what our, how many feet are in an inch and how many inches are in a foot? Uh, 12. 12 inches in one foot and one foot is 12 inches. If I want to change it to inches, I want to use the one with the inches on top. Do you remember that rule? Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to multiply this, put it over one. 
And I'm going to multiply it by 12 inches over 1 foot. Guess what that does? Cancels out my feet. Now I have inches as my answer. So I'm going to do 0 0.65 times 12. Uh, and tell me what you get. 0.65 times 12 is 7.8. 7.8. So, all right, 7.8, stay with me, we still don't want decimals. So, do you remember what 8 is? What spot is that in? Tenths. Yeah. Remember that? So this is 7 and 8 tenths. Okay? So are we going to round? Or? Well, basically what they end up doing is saying, well, this eight. is 14.8 yeah. um, inches. Okay? That's how they look. Well, I'm sorry, 14 feet and 8 inches since 7.8 is almost 8 inches. Yeah. Although. That's about right. Though. Yeah. It's okay. Um, you could probably do exact measurement if you actually had the raptor in front of you. It'd be easier. Okay? Plus, it'd be easier if this was a Pythagorean triplet because it'd come out even. But anyway. Okay. So, last problem. And we're done. Okay? So, listen to this. Serena went to a field to fly a kite. She let out all 200 feet of string and tied it to a stake. So here's my stake in the ground. Mm -hmm. I'm tying the rope around it, and I let it out. How much, how, how long was it? 250. 200? 200 feet. Okay, she let out all the string, and here's the kite. Okay? All right, it's time to stake, but it's blowing in the wind. Okay, now here's what she says. Then she walked out from the stake and got directly under the kite. Okay. She was 150 feet from the stake. You with me? Yep. Okay. Here's the question. How high was the kite? Oh, we don't know. <laughs> okay, so do you remember which one's A, B, and which one's C? C is 200. C is 200, good job. Okay, so here we go. So we have, remember the one across from the perfect square is our C. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we don't know what B is. Uh, or, or A, or does it matter? Um, a. a or B, no, the sides don't matter. So it could be A or B. Okay, so we're going to go A squared plus our B is 150 squared. What is 150 times 150? Uh, 22,500. 22,500? Yeah. Okay. Good. And our C squared is 200 squared, which is what? 40,000. 40,000. Okay, <laughs> now, here we go, so stay with me. Pretend this was a problem. Don't pay attention to this for a minute. If I was trying to get my A squared by itself, what would I do? Uh, what would I do to this plus? Oh, uh, you would make it minus. We would move it across the equal sign and minus it. Very good, so go on and do that for me. And so it's... 43 minus 22. Okay, 17. Is that right? 17,500? Mm -hmm. That's what the book has, too. Okay, and so that's feet square because we're um, still doing math or doing the feet and feet. Okay, so stay with me. Now, what do I do with this? Because, I'm sorry, because. This is A squared. I want to get A by itself. Mm -hmm. What do I do with this? Um, we make a square root. We move it across the equal sign and do the opposite of squaring, which is square rooting. Yep. So now A equals the square root of 17,500. 17, 
and it ends up equaling approximately, you'll see these little squiggly lines like this for my equals, mm -hmm. which means approximately. Okay. And it's approximately 130, uh, 132 feet. Okay? So, what is the height of the kite? 132 feet in the air. Isn't that cool? How mm -hmm. we can figure that out? That's pretty good math. All right, that is lesson 112.